everyone and welcome back to my channel um if you are returning thank you very much for rocking with me if you are new so very welcome i hope you guys enjoyed this video um so today i'll be talking about marlene lernberg and yeah so she's known as the scissors murderess uh so yeah don't forget to do all the nice things below subscribe like turn on your bell as well so that you know when i post a new video and share the videos um yeah that would be very much appreciated i hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said and let's get into it okay so so Malene was 19 when she started planning planning the murder right you're gonna find out who's murder um and she was 16 when she started working at the Red Cross Red Cross Children's Hospital in Cape Town and she was a receptionist there at the orthopedic workshop. At the same orthopedic workshop, the chief technician there, his name was Christian van der Linde and he was 47. So he was very like much older than Marlene. But anyway, they became they started having a close relationship, you know, they they their relationship went from being professional to you know they were actually lovers and in Marlene's background uh, it is said that her father and her never really had like a close relationship because her father just was very strict and was very conservative you know he she, he didn't give her the attention that she felt she needed so when Christian came along he was like that father figure to her he she fell madly in love with him 1974 so this was 1976 when it started 1974 their intimacy stopped because people started catching on to the relationship and um christian's wife started receiving anonymous calls and christian wasn't going to let her ma his marriage go like he wasn't letting go of his family for anything like and this frustrated Marlene because she saw the family as an obstacle for her. It's like, okay, I have to get rid of the family in order to get my man. So anyway, in the same 1974, uh, Marlene decides, okay, I want to leave Cape Town, you know, to leave all this drama behind. And Christian actually, uh, he actually persuades her to not leave Cape Town. Like, why? Because if you're not going to, like... Marlene didn't want to be the, the other woman anymore. So if you're not going to leave your family, then I'm going to leave. But anyway, Christian persuaded her otherwise and she stayed around. In September, Marlene calls Susanna. Susanna is Christian's wife. To tell, Christ, um, to tell Susanna about the, the affair she's having with Christian. Susanna doesn't give her any attention. Susanna is like, girl, whatever. Like... She doesn't give her the attention that she wanted or the heat that she wanted. But anyway, in October, um, Susanna and Marlene eventually meet in Belleville in Cape Town. And basically, Susanna tells Marlene, like, listen, if you want to date Christian, that's cool. Like, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm not divorcing my husband. We have children together. So if you want to stick around, that's okay. Just know that you are the other woman. And obviously, this doesn't sit well with Marlene. And... Yeah, basically, Susanna would rather share Christian than let go of him. So anyway, there is another pawn in this whole story and his name is Martinez. Um, Martinez is 33 years old and he is unemployed, he's a cripple. So he's a patient at the hospital that uh, Marlene and Christian work at. So Marlene sees the opportunity to use Martinez as her own little pawn, you know, to get what she wants. So basically, Marlene asks um, Martinez to kill somebody for her. And obviously, Martinez is like, what? But also, Martinez has a previous uh, charge for carrying a dangerous weapon. So he's not really like, you know, clean, clean. But he, he in the beginning, he was like, nah, like he wasn't going to do that. He, wasn't, he didn't want to be involved. But anyway, in, a, in the attempt to convince Martinez, Marlene actually gives her him one rand and a bottle of gin. One rand. 
egg one brand okay so after Marlene eventually convinces Martinez to do the crime um, the first attempt he was actually going to warn Susana that you know there's somebody who actually wants to date brah so yeah he wasn't actually gonna kill her even though that's what Marlene thought he was actually gonna warn her when Martinez gets to Susana's house he chokes up and you know he can't even tell Susana the real deal and instead he asks for change like for loose money um, and Susana is like no I don't have any change so anyway Martinez walks away so that was the first failed attempt so he admits that he was scared and so um, Marlene is like okay I promise if you do this we will fix your leg and then she gave him a radio so Martinez goes back for the second time the second time he can't even walk into the yard to go to the house he just walks past the house and doesn't even attempt anything and then he goes back to Marlene and is like mm -mm, second fail attempt and Marlene is like okay dude I promise if you do this then um, I will give you a car and we can have sex sex is always involved anyway um, so the third attempt was on October the 24th and Martinez walks up to the house and she actually he actually had a hammer that he was supposed to use um as a weapon when he was you know doing the things on Sus on susana but susana actually sees him uh before he could even like attempt anything like susana actually spots him and actually calls the police on him because it's like the third time she's seeing this dude around her house or her neighborhood so she calls the police on him the police come get him and he's taken to the police station and they actually beat him up and tell him never to return to the neighborhood again okay so 1974 october marlene hands in her pro her notice to leave the hospital um so i guess she was like resigning so she hands in her her, her notice to leave and tells Christian that she's leaving Cape Town Martinez had failed three times already uh, Marlene is like, okay, let me find somebody else to help me. So there's a certain guy named Rob Newman and She asks Rob to borrow her his pistol and Rob is like no And then she's like, okay, can you please kill somebody for me? And he's like, no so on uh, 28th of October Rob's pistol goes missing and Rob actually calls the police who um, report that his pistol is missing and is like I actually think Marlene is the suspect because she asked me for my gun and I said no and now all of a sudden my gun is missing so anyway on Monday the 4th of November 1974 uh, 8.30 in the morning Marlene drives to Martinez's place to pick him up and she tells him that please accompany me to Christian's home because I, I'm leaving Cape Town and I want to say goodbye uh, Martinez is like okay I mean I can accompany you on their way to Christian's house uh, Marlene gives Martinez a gun and that's when Martinez is like okay we, we are not gonna say goodbye we are on other missions right now so anyway a little after 9 a.m. they get to Christian's house and they find and they, they see Susanna Christian's wife outside um, by herself so when they get to the house and they see Susanna is outside alone I guess Susanna walks into her house because then Marlene says they walk to the door she rang the doorbell went back to the car leaving Martinez to commit the crime Martinez is like no we were together when we went up to the house and they actually entered the house together and it actually startled Susanna because she was startled to see them there and he tried she tried to call the police and she couldn't because Marlene actually tripped her and she hit Susanna hit her head on the on the door so then she fell on the floor she was um, and then that's when Marlene told Martinez to throttle her uh, and while she was throttling her Marlene actually gave Martinez a pair of scissors that she got from the sideboard 
and Martinez started stabbing Susana. Martinez says he remembers stabbing her three times, but then the pathologist actually found seven stabbings, six of which were in her chest. So then after that, uh, Marlene um, squirts green dye all over Martinez uh, using the weapon gas pistol. And that weapon gas pistol was actually in the house um, because Susana wanted to protect herself. So after seeing Martinez so many times around her house, she's like, no man, there's this weird guy, you know, she's all, he's like very suspect. So she asked Christian to buy her this weapon gas pistol. So yeah. So anyway, after the whole ordeal, Marlene threatens and tells Mar Martinez that if you go to the police, I will deny everything. So don't even bother yourself. And then she left Cape Town and drove all the way to Johannesburg. Martinez kept both the pistols and he actually didn't get rid of them because he said it was dangerous to do so. Like it was dangerous to get rid of the pistols. And then the pistols end up getting recovered like because he didn't throw them away. So the police eventually found the pistols. So anyway, how Susana was found, uh, Ma Christian was calling Susana the whole morning and Susana wasn't answering and it was very weird. Like it wasn't a normal thing for Susana not to answer the phone. So after failed attempts of getting a hold of his wife, Christian is like, no. And then he, he calls her, um, his daughter and is like, go check on your mom because she's not answering her, my calls. So then Christian's daughter goes home to check on the mom and finds that her mother had been murdered. So, after Susan had been found and all of that, a murder case had to be opened, of course, and the suspect was a crippled colored man, which would be Martinez, because I guess maybe from the previous, um, you know, the last time when Susana actually called the cops on Martinez, and also apparently there was a neighbor, the very same day that Martinez and Marlene went to go kill Susana. There was a neighbor who saw Marlene and Martinez, and she actually saw Marlene's, ha Marlene's car outside Susana's house. So, anyway, on the 13th of November, half past seven in the morning, remember now, Marlene is in Joburg. Um, Marlene is actually picked up at her uncle's house in Bryanston. And she eventually confesses to um, dating Christian, but then she says that she, she, she was expecting the police to come because she had heard about Susanna's murder from her mother. Um, and then the police asked, him about, asked her about Martinez and she said she doesn't know who Martinez is. They asked her about Rob Newman she said oh i was only joking like i wasn't being serious when i asked him to kill somebody for me and all of those things and yeah eventually she confessed to knowing who martinez was and says that she was outside when he went in and did the murder so she says i took the guy to the house i stayed outside he went in and did his thing and then when he came back i took him home but then with all of that she was ar arrested and charged with the murder and obviously martinez was her accomplice and in fact the judge had no doubt that marlene was the mastermind and um sentenced her to death but then i think two months later in 1975 her case was reopened and she was sentenced to 20 years and martinez was sentenced to 15 years while in prison guys she got a degree in psychology. Uh, she also studied finance, debt collecting, computer programming, and music. In, 19, in the late 1970s, a Marlene Lernberg clause was actually um, passed in South Africa, preventing any convicted offender from profiting from their story because Marlene actually wanted to sell her story to the press. Um, and then she was paroled in 1986 in December after 11 years of being inside and after the conditions of her parole had expired, she 
she was on a mission to like tell like to like tell the the whole truth and like because she felt like she wanted to prove her innocence and that people didn't really know the actual truth of what happened and then she actually said that the drugs that her boyfriend had given her had drove her to want to kill i guess by boyfriend she means christian and then um marlene actually committed suicide in october of 2015 five days before her 60th birthday um she has actually had osteoporosis and she was diagnosed with breast cancer so all in all she was just like tired of suffering um and also allegedly apparently somewhere along the lines she had said that she had no remorse and she, the only thing that she regretted was spending almost 12 years of her precious life in prison and that nobody actually knows the truth of the matter and what actually went down i guess with that whole relationship and how they got to the murder so that is who Marlene Lundberg is. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying tuned. Um, don't forget to comment, to like, to share the video. I truly do appreciate um all of you for you know watching and subscribing and doing all the good stuff. I will see you guys in the next video.